Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to see all of you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, we pray God's blessing upon you and that He'll touch you in a special way. If you haven't done so already, check in on Facebook and let them know that you're here. Invite them to Sunday uh, next week uh, and uh, let them know that uh, they are welcome. Uh, if you would, uh, look at the announcements in your bulletin. We have uh, so many announcements that that's all we're going to do today. Uh, nothing else, uh, just announcements. So, uh, if you haven't picked up your red bag, be sure to do that. Uh, those red bags go and uh, help uh, in the community. Uh, they help out at Common Ground, so I hope that you will get one of those and then bring those back next Sunday uh, filled up with various canned goods. Uh, and uh, this is what they need this month. They need rice, chicken noodle soup, chili, canned spaghetti, pork and beans, and whatever else that you would like to put in that bag. But that's specifically uh, the things that they're looking for that they're running low on at Common Ground. So be sure to get that red bag uh, and uh, take care of that. Also, a couple of other mission opportunities. Uh, Paint Your Heart Out is going to be May 13th. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the North X that you can uh, sign up with. And also, uh, the missions team will be going to Dulac June 10th through 16th, June si uh, 10th through 16th. So there's a sign-up sheet uh, in the back of the North X as well. Any other mission stuff, Tim? Is that it? Not at the moment. Okay, so mark that on your uh, uh, counter. Also, you saw in your uh, bulletin about the chocolate challenge. So uh, start deciding what you're going to make that's going to thrill the community uh, and uh, their taste buds and uh, you're going to win the chocolate challenge. Uh, also on that same day is the extravaganza uh, and um, then you can read about that in the bulletin and also the day after that is the children's play and that is at 6 p.m. 5 o'clock Sunday night uh, so um, just make and the sign-up sheets are in the back out there. So be sure to uh, sign up for all everything that is in the North X. There's 7,000 sign-up sheets over that. And you can also see all the events uh, that are going on with that. We have finance and administrative council tonight, so know that that's going on. Uh, and uh, Marie wants to say a little something. Good morning. Um, firstly, I wanted to say about the red bags. Right now through Tuesday, I think it is, Kroger has peanut butter on for a dollar a jar. And so that's, you know, high in protein and it's something that a lot of times people can't afford. So that's go buy every can of it that they have. But <laughs> I wanted to give you all a special thank you from myself and the youth and from Blackwater UMC. Um, with all the money that we raised from our fish fry, we were able to give them a love offering of $1,500. So that will, yes y'all, yes. <laughs> that will completely fund five of their youth to go on their summer mission trip this summer. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are awesome. And uh, we just wanted to point out that that is where Jonathan King is the pastor uh, at Blackwater, so uh, former associate uh, here. Uh, and to be able to fund fully five of their youth to go on a mission trip, how, how awesome is that that we were able uh, to do that. Uh, also, uh, this Tuesday, yes, March 28th at 5.30 to 7 uh, at the field behind AT&T, uh, the... Um, Southern Hills Business Association uh, is going to be having a little foddy dough. Uh, yeah, that thing. Uh, it's, uh, and Skyrunner is going to be doing a demo, which is um, something that I'm never going to do. Uh, Harold, why don't you just say something a little bit about that? We have the most gentleman named Stuart Hamilton, right? I'm a car. He's buying an airplane. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to get to ride in the Skyrunner if they? No, they just get to see. 
uh, the, the Skyrunner. And it's kind of like an ultralight plane, right? Yeah, uh, so a dune buggy that can fly. Uh, so uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, there'll be food that you can buy, uh, bounce houses, and then you'll get to see uh, the uh, Skyrunner uh, with that. Uh, are there any other announcements that we want to share this morning? All right, let's stand for our call to worship. worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to Him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to Him. Let's remain standing for our first hymn, number 368, My Hope is Built. remain standing as we join together in professing our Christian faith by saying the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to God. 
Be seated, and would the children please come down now for our children's moment? Oh, good morning. How is everybody? Good. Who here is happy to be on spring break? <laughs> You're not on spring break yet. I'm so sorry. You have one more week, right? after Easter. You have a ways to go, sister. I'm sorry. We needed this spring break right now. Who here has ever, or still does maybe, and enjoys it? Who likes to play in the mud? Yeah? Playing in mud's fun, right? <clears throat> have you ever made a mud, mud pie? Yeah? Did you eat it? Okay. Just making sure. You tried once? It's not very good, is it? Yeah. You know that people have been playing with mud all through history. They weren't playing with it. They were using it for different things. People that make pottery with it. They made houses with mud. Some people travel from all over the world to the Dead Sea so they can put that special mud all over their body. It's supposed to make you beautiful. Supposedly. I'd like to go try that one. It might help, right? Well, did you know that Jesus, he did something really special with mud one time. One day, him and his disciples, they were walking and they came upon a blind man. And the man had been blind since birth. And they, the, the disciples, they thought that he was blind because of some sort of sin that he did or maybe his parents did. But Jesus, he told them that his blindness wasn't because of sin, but it was so that the power of God could be seen in his life. So Jesus knelt down and he, he spit in the dirt. Spit. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I probably would have been running away. But he spit and he made a little mud with, his, with the dirt and he rubbed it in the man's eyes. And he said, okay, now you go to a particular body of water. He said, you wash it off. And guess what happened? He could see. The blind man could see. That's some pretty good mud, right? He rubbed it on his eyes. And then he could see. That's really neat. Now, <clears throat> I don't know what kind of problems that you have in your life. They may be really big. They may be really small. But I think if Jesus can heal a blind man with some mud, he could probably, he'd probably help us out in our lives too, right? When you remember that, we keep Jesus in our hearts and in our lives every day. And our problems really won't. We won't have trouble with our problems, right? Okay. Addie is going to say our prayer, so everybody bow their head. Dear God, we pray that lives are changed and your name is glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. As a people of God, we're called to pray for each other and with each other. At this time, are there any concerns you want to lift up to the congregation? Uh, let's continue to pray for Mary Nell uh, Miller. Please. Okay. All right. Other concerns? It's not spreading. It's doing well. We're glad Larry's here. So, uh... so if you're sick, stay away from Larry. Don't don't go near him. But just wave and say hi, Larry. We're glad you're here.
She is now. Yay! Hallelujah. Her daughter's cancer free. All right, do we have any anniversaries? To continue with what you were talking about, of prayers and whatnot, I want y'all to continue to pray for Colleen. Today is our 31st anniversary, and she ain't left yet. Y'all continue to pray. <laughs> Yes, she needs lots and lots of prayers. So, any other anniversaries? Any birthdays? Paul's Tuesday. Eighty-seven. There was. You have a birthday when? Today. Hallelujah. Any others? Any other joys or concerns? Well, Margie is here. Yes, we're so glad that Margie's here, doing well from her surgery. Oh, great. And you're right. She definitely would be thanking everybody for their hard work and, and all that they uh, did. And whoever it was that made her go to the hospital, thank you uh, for, for doing that because she didn't want to go. But uh, thank you all for, for making her, whoever that was. Any other joys or concerns? I'm Let's, glad to be back. We're glad to have you over here. You're not back. You're just on this side of... Uh, instead of being at the contemporary, you're at the traditional. So let's bow. Uh, we got one more. Okay, so we're saying goodbye to Darlene. One more week. Okay. Uh, so uh, y'all, uh, uh, y'all are coming back, or y'all are. Well, I'm not going to say we're going to pray against that or anything, but uh, uh, so uh, we'll be praying for y'all that God's will would be done in your life. So, so, uh, and you will be missed. Let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we just thank You so much for the love that You have for each and every one of us. We thank You for Jesus Christ coming into the world and shining His light in the darkness of this world and shining His light in the darkness of each and every one of our lives. We pray that that light would shine in our hearts and our lives and our souls this morning. If there's anything that is hiding in the darkness, may your light cast it out. Cast out all darkness from all of our lives and help us to be the light, the light of the world. And help us not to hide that light, but to shine it wherever we go. We've mentioned many concerns this morning. We pray that you would handle each and every one of them, that your will would be done in those circumstances. We want to pray especially for healing of Mary Nell and uh, just help the doctors and nurses find out what's going on there. Uh, we thank you so much for the hard work of all those who in the rummage sale this week and thank you for, for the blessing of $5,000 that, that they helped to raise. Uh, we thank you so much for... Um, the youth being able to help another youth group go on mission trips. Uh, we thank you for the mission trips that are going on all around us in this church and, and for this church's willingness to serve you and to go out into the world and to share the love of Jesus Christ. Show us how we can be the light in the world. Show us where we need to go, what we need to do, how we can better be the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, there may be some of us here this morning that feel lost or alone or scared or, or feel like they are in the dark. May the true light of Jesus Christ find them this morning. Break into their hearts, into their lives, into their souls. And let them know You. All of this we pray in the name of the One who came into the world, who is the light of the world. And that is Your Son, Jesus. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would, open up your Bibles to Psalm 23. If you're using an electronic version of the Bible, I use the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible and you would like one, we'll give you one for free. Just come by the church office. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. The Word of God for the people of God. Now would the ushers please come down now as we worship God with His tithes and our offerings above those tithes. Let us pray. Loving Lord, You are always with us. Even in our darkest times, Your light shines. And now we give back to You Your tithes and our offerings above those tithes. Help us as a church to use them to bring the light of the world to a dark world. May we use them to glorify Your Son, Jesus, and to let others know of His love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
love is so dim rum is so dear to me it's good for suffering yet it brought us peace it takes the gap for men offered cleansing for our sins an icon that reminds us that we're free your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 through 14. You just remember Romans, and then you remember General Electric Power Company, 
which is Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's a good way for you to remember how to do that. All you Swepco people, don't be upset that I talked about General Electric. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. For once you were filled with darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about these things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to Your Word, O Lord our God, our Rock and our Redeemer. And we pray this morning that You would wake us up, that You would help Your light shine in our lives, and that You would help us to be the light of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What were your kids' favorite things when they were growing up? Or, or, or their favorite TV shows? Or, or what, what was it that, that you can think back and think about things that your kids uh, would do? Uh, when uh, our kids were growing up, they had this TV show on. Uh, and it wasn't that bad. Um, it wasn't that annoying. Some of the TV shows the kids have are kind of annoying. Uh, but this was The Wiggles. Uh, anybody familiar with The Wiggles? Uh, this was a group of of, was it four guys that they sang songs and they had all these different personalities and they had different shirts and different colors and, and each of them had a different personality and, and one of them, uh, his name was Jeff uh, and he had a purple shirt on uh, and Jeff for some reason would fall asleep all the time in the most odd places and the different, different places all over and, and they had this little thing where they would all get together and everyone there, not just the Wiggles, all the different characters, the, the octopus and the pirate and all the different, you know, kid shows. Uh, and, and, and they would all get together and they would scream. You could have screamed it. I was hoping you would. Wake up, Jeff! And then he would go... Like that. And it happened two, three, four times on each little episode of The Wiggles. And Allison's dad would play this little game with Wesley, and he would just fall asleep on the floor, kind of like Jeff. And Wesley would go, Wake up, Paw Paw! And he would do that, that little... You know, grandparents do the, the funniest things for their kids, don't they? And, and he would do that sort of thing. So this morning, we want all of us to wake up. Not just during the sermon, uh, but uh, to wake up in, in our spiritual lives. Uh, uh, Paul is writing there, and, and he uses this... They think it was a hymn or a popular saying or poem at the time, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. This morning, Christ wants you to know uh, some certain things about your relationship with Him. Uh, the first thing that, that He wants you to know is that you are light. You are light. If you look there in that first verse, uh, starting uh, in, in, in verse 8, it says, For once you were full of darkness. You were full of darkness. And, and literally what is there in the Greek is you were darkness. That's what you were. Uh, and, and, and many times you'll hear me say that, you know, we think of ourselves as dirty, rotten sinners. Well, that's what you were. In the past, you were a dirty, rotten sinner before you met Christ. You were living in the dark before you, you, you met Christ. But now, but now, you are light. 
Literally, that's what that says right there in that verse. And if you have your Bibles open, I want you to underline that and write it and say, You are light. Do you see the difference about where you used to be? You used to be in the dark. You used to be part of the darkness. But now that Christ has broken into your life, you are now light. Jesus says it in Matthew 5, verse 14, uh, which I think is kind of an interesting parallel uh, there. But Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 14, Jesus says, You are the what of the world? Light. The light of the world. You are the light of the world. And you shouldn't hide that light under a basket. You should shine it for the whole world to see. Because a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And as followers of Jesus Christ, as being the light, we are to shine Christ's light into the darkness of the world. Paul tells us that you used to be in the dark, but now you're in the light. How many of y'all were scared of the dark when you were growing up? Or some of you might still be scared uh, of the dark. Uh, when, when I was growing up, uh, they had these these movies on that uh, would play in the afternoon after school and they were black and white and, and they would go through these monsters, different monsters you know, they had the werewolf they had Dracula, they had different different monsters, the mummy all these, do you remember those movies that, that would come on black and white movies uh, and, and uh, they would scare me silly uh, I would love watching it I let, it was great fun, but you know what? When it was time for bed, uh, and, and that light would go off, I would sit there in the bed, and everything in all the world would be in that room with me. Uh, and what would happen? I'd go flick the light on, and what? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes I'd have a bad dream, and I'd yell and scream, and, and my mom would come in the room, and she would remind me that there's nothing there uh, in the light that's not there in the dark. And remember that the light cast out that darkness. And that Jesus is always there with you, even when you're afraid. And so, when I get scared at night, I had this little, um, it was about this big, and I had a bulletin board, and, and on the bulletin board it was placed up there on a little pin, and on that was a glow-in-the-dark cross on this little, little uh, card. And underneath the cross was the 23rd Psalm. And so if I ever got scared of the dark, I'd just look up at the light of the cross and I would remember that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil. Because why? God is with me. That we're not alone. That God is always there with us. We're not alone. That God is there and, and that there and, and the light <coughs> cast out the darkness. I want you to go home and I want you to open up your refrigerator. Is the refrigerator ever dark? <laughs> Only when the lights burn out, right? But you can't there's you can't you can't ever look in that refrigerator and not see light. Why? Well, that's the way it ought to be with us and with Jesus Christ. People ought to look at us and never see any darkness in us because the light of Christ has shined so much in us that that darkness is cast out. We are to be light to the world. We are to go out into the world and the light of Christ shines so much into us that it glows out into the world and, and it makes all the darkness go away. Because we are light, we go into the world to share the light and to cast out the darkness in the world. And in John it tells us that the darkness cannot overcome the light. Jesus Christ came into the world so that no nothing, no darkness, no hurt, no pain, no grief, no, no evil in the world could overcome Him. Because Christ has overcome it all. And He says the light of Christ would shine in us and through us. And it would prove, it would prove uh, that people are living in the light. And it produces only what is good and true. Uh, when Alice and I had the opportunity to go uh, on a uh, pilgrimage 
uh, to Rome. Uh, and we went to all these places, all these different churches, saw all these different saints uh, that were there. And uh, in that, uh, we, Allison, she likes to shop. You'll, you'll learn this about her. Uh, and so we would go into all these little stores, and there was this store, uh, and that you'll learn this about me, there was this store that was selling lemon cookies. Uh, and I love lemon things. Lemon cookies. And the lemoner near ner that is, the better. Uh, and, and, and if it doesn't make you pucker, they need more lemon in, in that. Uh, and uh, there was this store, and, and they, they, they would give free samples uh, of, of the cookies and the, and the chocolates and everything, because if you tasted it, you would buy it. Uh, and so they drew us into this store, and, and they start telling us, do you like balsamic vinegar? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Well, you know that the stuff you buy in the States isn't real, right? Um, no, I, I didn't know that. They said, well, because this is what, this, if you ever are buying balsamic vinegar, what you need to do is you need to get the vinegar and the bottle and the vinegar, and, and, and you, you get the vinegar and you kind of swish it around a little bit in there, and then you hold it up to the light. And I don't remember what he said after that. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't buy a good bottle of balsamic vinegar because I wasn't ever going to do that anyway. But he said the proof happens when you hold this bottle up to the light. It, it proves whether or not, if you look at it this way and it does this certain thing and it's doing this on the bottle and it's this certain color and all these sort of things, then it proves that this is the real deal. That's the real deal. And so, in our own lives, we need, to, we need to hold ourselves up to the cross of Christ and let the light of Christ shine on us and in us and through us and see if we're living out the real deal or if we're living in darkness. Uh, we allow the light of Christ, the light of the true light of the world, the light that is Jesus Christ, the light that does shine in the darkness, that shines in the darkness of our own lives, and, and, and it casts out the darkness in our life. We need to let that light shine on us and help us to become purer, more like Him, walk like Him, love like Him, be like Him, forgive like Him, and, and to put off all of those dark ways. The writer reminds us that we used to live this way, but now, now we live this way. And, and uh, if you're living in the darkness, then you aren't really the true, real deal. This season of Lent is a time where the light of Christ shines into our lives and it shows us and reminds us how those, there's areas of our life that aren't quite like Him yet. We're not really 100% pure balsamic vinegar try it quite yet. We're not 100% pure disciple of Jesus Christ. But the more that we put ourselves into the light, the more that we allow the love of Christ to shine on us and in us, the more that we become more and more and more like Him. Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. It's our job to put off all the old dark ways. And when we find ourselves kind of giving back into those things, we allow that forgiveness and that love of Christ to come back and shine on us and, and to get rid of it uh, again. If you're curious about the darkness, you can go back and, and start reading at the beginning of chapter 5 and it'll show you some things that are people the way that people were living. That what they were doing, what they were associating with, how they were living their lives. Uh, but we aren't like that anymore. Why? Because we are now the light. We are the light of the world. We are the light to those who are in darkness in the world. We are the people that come into the darkness of their lives and share the love of Christ with them. We are the ones who are to help them to see that they can be 100% pure just like Jesus Christ. The season of Lent is a time for us to wake up. To remember that we are gods. We are children of the light and we are the light. 
this Lenten season, as we journey towards the cross, as we journey towards the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made so that all of our sins are forgiven, so that every sin we've ever committed or will commit will be forgiven. Uh, But as we journey towards that cross, as we journey towards the time that we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, we remember that our lives now must be different. We can't allow one drop of that blood that Jesus shed to be sacrificed in vain. We have to remember that Jesus gave His all. The most painful death known to human beings. So that you could no longer be darkness so that you could now be the light. Wake up. Stop living in the dark and allow Jesus Christ to make you be the light. The light that shines in the darkness for the whole world to see until Jesus Christ comes back again. Until Jesus Christ comes back again and and the whole world becomes light. Maybe God's speaking to you right now and reminding you of some kind of darkness. Something that's been eating you up. Something that's been keeping you from truly being the light. Maybe it's because you've just thought, well, I'm just human. I'm, I'm just a sinner. I, I can't help doing that. Yes, you can. With God's help, you can overcome it all. Or, or, or maybe there's something in your life that's enveloping you in darkness. Ask the light of the world to get rid of that darkness right now. Or maybe you feel like you're in darkness because you haven't met the light of the world. Because He hasn't come and and greeted you in His light. Allow Him right now to greet you. To touch you. To heal you. And to make you light. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we so easily try to allow darkness back into the light that is us. We forget that your light overcomes all. Help us to seek out that light, the light of Christ. Help us to know, without a doubt, that we are yours. And help us to know, without a doubt, that your light cast out all darkness in our lives. If we're lost and alone this morning, Lord, we're crying out to you to come and turn on the light. If we're living in darkness, pull us out of it and help us to be the light. And empower us by the power of your Holy Spirit to be the light to the world. And to live as people that are light. All of this we pray in the name of the light of the world. Your Son, Jesus. Amen. During our last hymn, we open our altar for you for prayer. You can come up here and pray for as long as you like. 
If you'd like me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'm just going to let you pray at the altar by yourself. Maybe this morning you heard the good news that Jesus Christ loves you. He wants to cast out the darkness in your life. We invite you to come down this morning and, and accept the light into your life to cast out that darkness and make Him your Lord and Savior. Uh, you can come down during this song and uh, uh, make Him your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and uh, this is where you want to learn how to live as a child of the light. Then we invite you to come down during this last song and and become part of our church family. There's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. Bring that down with you uh, and become part of this church family. Whoever God is inviting you to respond, we pray that you will as we all stand together and sing our last hymn. <laughs>